my soccer universe. We have the first couple of qualifiers for the round of 16. And yeah, uh, three matches yesterday and it's a little bit weird because today there's only Africa Cup of Nations that I can update since there's a break at the Copa America and at the Women's World Cup. Since I'm very Nigeria, you know that Nigeria has won is one of those two teams. Um, Nigeria played in the early game in the heat in Alexandria, although from what I hear in Alexandria it's not as bad because you get the breeze from the uh, sea still uh, for 30 uh, European time which is 5.30 local time is uh, already a rough kickoff time. Uh, surprisingly the game started to be a very 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 open one um, with going back and forth with chances on both sides. I mean nothing um, where I have to say this was now a sitter or so on, but there were chances and um, Nabi Keita pulling the strings in the Guinean uh, midfield, Sisse, uh, Kamano and um, Kaba on the front uh, caused some trouble. You could also see that the goalkeeper from Nigeria, Akpe, is a little bit shaky uh, on the wire, on long shots. Uh, for Nigeria, the talent that they have especially going forward is just amazing uh, to uh, this time it was Musa, Iwobi and Igalo uh, kind of on the front line you have to say it's uh, if they gel this could be a real attacking force but uh, they didn't gel all all much I think there was one uh, situation where I think it was uh, Igala who just missed a Wobi free in the middle and uh, couldn't get in. Um, so the first 20, 25, 5 minutes, there was, it was quite high speed, but then the pace considerably slowed um, with only uh, the occasional chances because I think the heat took its toll. Uh, at that point, the game was rather even. In the second half, though, Nigeria started to dominate. Uh, get their chances, which are mostly, I mean, long range shots. However, when they earn a corner in the 73rd, uh, the center back uh, Omeru comes to the uh, short post, near post, and uh, heads it in from there. Um, Guinea cannot find an equalizer, and so it ends with a 1 0 win for Nigeria. This 1-0 win is enough for Nigeria, given that um, Madagascar and Guinea only had a draw and that Burundi has been beaten by Nigeria. That's enough for Nigeria to advance to the next round already. Uh, in what position, we shall see, but at once they do. And then Group A, uh, we were both games were played in the Cairo International Stadium, which was actually good news for Uganda and Zimbabwe because Thanks to the double header uh, and Egypt playing in the later game, there was a sizable crowd already there for Uganda Zimbabwe. I mean, it, the stadium filled as the game went on. Unfortunately, I mean, uh, for Nigeria Guinea, I saw the first half. Uh, for those two games, I didn't see them so highlights. And from what I can tell, Uganda Zimbabwe was quite the interesting game. Jersey matchup, of course. Um, Uganda. In the Mafro kids, Zimbabwe, unfortunately not Mafro, but with Umbro, where I have to say, I mean, the Warriors, just yellow with a little bit of white in, seems a little bit boringish, could be better. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, visually great. I mean, red and black is strong, yellow is strong. Uh, again, one of those color combinations that you don't see that often in Europe. Uganda takes an early lead, uh, was a shot that was bounced by the goalkeeper, falls to the foot of Okwi, who in the 12th minute can put it in. And then Zimbabwe came and the story would be uh, the missed chances by Zimbabwe. There was a huge chance already in the first half where uh, basically Ebdenet and the um, striker, I think it was Musona, uh, put it high over the bar. Uh, one of those that you gotta make. Um, Billiard does get the equalizer uh, from um, kind of a mid-range effort uh, in the 40th minute and it ends 1-1. And now uh, the second half was just nuts in terms of chances. There was another one and 
I wish I would know now the name. I should have made notes for that. Um, cross in uh, Zimbabwe attacks it as a cross in the goal is wide open uh, and the attacker just takes it out of, out of there and puts it on the bar I mean that was a sitter as as much a sitter as a sitter can be uh, this needs to go into net it doesn't uh, a few minutes later uh, another um, cross comes in from touchline goes back uh, shot off uh, to the goalie who gets a touch on it, a crucial touch. I mean, it basically um, the ball I think hits him here on the arm, and it gets a spin so that it bounces on the goal and through the spin gets out and he can save it. Another absolute huge chance that needs to be in the net was not to be. Uganda then had two chances um, again. Uh, missing wide and same thing for Zimbabwe and so it uh, probably a pretty entertaining game ends 1-1 I mean it just was watching 10-12 minute highlights and also really entertaining to watch these uh, especially with those chances missed and then uh, chances missed was also the theme for the late game between Egypt and the DRC the Democratic Republic of Congo um, I was surprised that the DRC has white uh, third kit seemingly because I know that they usually have a, a red, a blue home kit and a red away kit, uh, which both would not have really worked because both have a considerable amount of red. So uh, the white kit makes many, many, many a lot of sense. Um, those O'Neill's kit for the DRC are usually really nice, and uh, this one had kind of the shape of uh, the DRC sublimated into it uh, other than that it was just white with light blue and then Egypt in their new Puma shirts uh, that look more interesting than the Adidas on with this world but it's, it is a template so don't want to give them too much credit. The DRC gave Egypt a fight. That gotta be said from, from the beginning. Uh, they hit the uh, post I think right around the 10th uh, minute uh not sure if it was was going but the ball comes in and a volley out, out of the air goes to to the bar then uh egypt has i think this and this was a core a, a corner kick where el mohammadi uh gets to the uh ball it is blocked he gets the shot off again it was actually blocked with the uh, uh, hand so it could have been a hand handball but he gets the shot in and in 25 5th minute it is of nil egypt around the 40th the drc has another uh shot to the woodwork and exactly if we don't take those chances in the lion's den mohammed salah is gonna um, punish you that's exactly what he did um, it was kind of, I don't want to say a counter attack, but uh, it was a two and four CAC situation going forward. But Salah can get the ball, uh, can run with the ball from kind of center of, of the attacking half to the box, gets to, 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 to the box. The defenders try to see what is he, is he going to do. And he just sees that there's an opening at the near post and puts it in the net, makes it 2 0, finally gets his goal and more or less secures the win for Egypt at the, at the moment because in the second half, I mean, yes, the DRC tried to come back, but overall Egypt pretty much had it in the bag at that point. This now also means that Egypt is the other team that's qualified. And I know, I wish I had a nice Egypt jersey and you know which one I'm talking about, the 2010 home jersey is the one that I want to have. So in the group now, Egypt leads with six points is through to the next round. Uganda with four looks promising for a spot in the uh, round. Round of 16, four points is usually a good sign. Zimbabwe missed chance. I mean, if Zimbabwe would have gotten the win here, uh, they would be in the thick of it. And the DRZ at zero, they need to now hope for a win against Zimbabwe to have a chance. Uh, this win would actually send Uganda through for sure. But for what I could see, Zimbabwe is not a bad team. Uh, they gave Egypt a run for the money and now they probably should have gotten the win against Uganda. So while at first I thought, yeah, I think my 
prediction was that Zimbabwe will finish third behind uh, Egypt in the DRC. I was completely off for DRC, but I feel a little bit way vindicated. I thought that Zimbabwe is the third strongest team. They might be the second strongest team in there and they might not make it. All to be seen. All to be seen. Uh, I know that DRC is a team also showed that they can be better. They are opening defeat against Uganda. Yeah. And Egypt. I mean, there's no team that has looked really, really, really convincing, but Egypt looks, I don't want to say pedestrian, because that's surely not the case, but they seem beatable. Let's put it that way. But on the other side, this is a stout team that is hard to break down, and this always counts for a lot. I have to say that too. Uh, and those teams usually grow in the tournament, and for me, Egypt is still the favorite uh, to win it all. All to be seen. We have still a few weeks to go. I will probably try to start collecting data a little bit more than what I've seen already for an uh, Africa Cup of Nations jersey review. That will be the last um, Copa America jersey review. will be uh, coming up uh, probably this afternoon. Uh, today we have a really, really, really good game um, slated from Group C between Senegal and Algeria, which is the 7 o'clock game. That is uh, probably one of the best matchups in uh, the group stage. Kenya-Tanzania is the late game and the early game is also one of Madagascar-Burundi. So uh, it's all about Senegal against Algeria and that one. That's going to be one to watch for. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below uh, if what I missed uh, or if you want to add anything to these games. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.